Okay, now unordered selections. <clears throat> so this is where we're going to use the word combination because we're looking at putting things together and it doesn't matter what order they come in, but what we're looking at is different combinations. So let's look at an example. If I have six students, so the same six students as we had in the last example, Michaela, Callum, Daniel, Joshua, Shana and Riverina. I want to know how many different pairs of students I can create. So if I was to put Michaela and Callum together as a pair, so Michaela and Callum, this is the same pair as putting Callum then Michaela. So it doesn't matter what order I choose my pair in, what matters is that if I choose Michaela first then Callum second, it's exactly the same pair as if I choose Callum first and then Michaela second. So here we're going to get double ups, we're going to get pairs or get combinations that are the same. So when we look at unordered selections, because they're not ordered, it doesn't matter what order they get picked in. So for example, a raffle prize. If it's an ordered selection, first, second and third, it matters. It matters what, what place you get chosen because clearly first prize is always going to be better than second prize and third prize. However, if your raffle is just three people and three people win the same thing, it doesn't matter if you're choosing, chosen first, second or third, as long as you're one of those three people. So if I looked at this example and I've got six students and I'm choosing a pair, so I have two positions or two boxes, six people in my first position and five people in my second position. But we know that because we have pairs, we're going to end up with doubles. And the reason we're going to get double the amount of combinations is because we've got pairs. One position is the same as the second position. And there are two positions, so we know they're going to appear twice. So because there's two positions, there are two ways that we could have the same combination or a double. Okay, so the same combination, remember it doesn't matter if Callum is choosen first or Michaela is chosen first. We end up with the same combination of people. So in this case, we're going to divide by the two positions. So that's 2 times 1, same multiplication principle that we've applied before. So we've got 6 times 5, and we're dividing by the number of positions because that tells us the number of times that things will be the same, that will be doubled up or tripled up or whatever it happens to be. So 6 times 5 is my normal counting that I would do to calculate the number of possible pairs. But these are looking at my doubles, so I've got to divide by how many are the same. Okay, all the same. So 6 times 5 is 30, 2 times 1 is 2. 30 divided by 2 gives me 15 different combinations of pairs of students. And remember, the reason why we've got two boxes on the bottom is because we are picking a pair, which is two people. So if I look over here and I'm saying, remember that my boxes are my number of positions. So N <clears throat> is my number of people that I have possible in each of these. So N, N minus 1, N minus 2, and it may continue to go down to 1. It may not, depending on the number of positions and the number of boxes, sorry, and the number of people that I have to choose. So remember in the previous example, we had six positions and six people. So that became factorial because it went all the way down to one. But if I have six positions and, sorry, I have two positions and six people, then I'm only going six times five. So N is the number of possibles for R items or R positions. Okay, so if I'm looking at two positions, then I'm dividing by R. And it's R factorial because it's got to be 2 times 1 or 5 times 1 uh, times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let's have a look at an example. If I'm looking at Lotto and I have six balls that are chosen, it doesn't matter about the order for Lotto. It doesn't matter if I choose um, the six comes out of the Lotto first or the six comes out third. It makes no difference. But the six can't come out in those different positions because otherwise I'd get exactly the same Lotto numbers just in different positions. So I've got six boxes for my six balls that are chosen out of the barrel for Lotto. So 45 are numbers to choose from. So 45 times 44 times 43 times 42 times 41 times 40. Each time I choose a, a number out of the barrel for Lotto, I reduce the number that's left in the barrel by one. 
Okay, I'm not putting it back in. Now, there will be a whole lot of doubles. So I might have the number 1, 15, 20, 32, and 45, and say 3. Now, they're my six numbers, but if I was to choose, say, 3, then 32, then 1, then 20, then 15, and at last 45, they're still the same set of lotto numbers. So they're still a winner. So what I need to do is work out how many positions I've got because the number of positions will tell me how many doubles or how many of the same combination I will have. Because in this case, when I have lotto, I only want to know the different combinations. I don't want to know how many are the same because order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what order they come out in as long as that combination isn't the same as that combination. So we've worked out that we know counting multiplication principle, reducing by one, one less in the barrel, six positions. Because we have six positions, we now need to do six factorial, or six times five times four times three times two times one, because that's how many times it will be six times in the first position will be the same, five times will be in the same position for the position two, four, three times it will be the same for that position times two times one. So that's six factorial. So multiplying 45 times 44 times 43 times 42 times 41 times 40 is going to give me that big number. And then I'm dividing by 6 factorial. Now alternatively, I could have bracketed up my answer and done 45 times 44 times 43 times 42 times 41 times 40 divided by, if I'm using brackets for the entire top, divided by 6 factorial for my answer and I'll get 8,145,060. So you can see, just out of that, six lotto balls, 45 in a barrel, you have a 1 in 8,145,060 chance of picking the correct six lotto numbers. Probably why a lot of people choose not to play lotto. However, you can now work on exercise 605, questions 4 to 14.